one. We ready? All right. So I got one team that really impressed me over the weekend at the North South Showcase. Plus, I got a ton of other thoughts on players, teams, uh, basically everybody that was in action in Traverse City over the weekend. I'm also going to get to my instant reactions from the MIHL Showcase matchup announcements uh, that went live late last week. I'll get you some feedback there on some of those matchups to watch coming up. But before I get into any of that, uh, I got to get into one of the more unique bizarre, unexpected stories of the weekend uh, that I was actually a part of. Uh, completely uh, completely wild. I'll, I'll kind of give you the rundown, the situation of how it all unfolded. I was up north in Traverse City for the North-South Showcase, as expected, to watch all 24 teams in action. Uh, as a lot of you know, around the state, we got some pretty rough weather, a lot of snow, a lot of wind. Uh, that made things pretty difficult. Schools were a lot of schools were closed on Fridays uh, and maybe even Thursday too, to a degree. But anyways, that forced a lot of schools to shut down, uh, limit or completely cancel uh, activities, so games, practices, things like that. Uh, one of the teams that was pretty affected by this was Forest Hill Central, who was supposed to be on site uh, for the showcase as of Thursday night. They had canceled the trip. Uh, people, powers that be had canceled the trip, so it's too dangerous. We're not going to let our students go. Uh, apparently, there was some pushback from the parent group. Parent group, obviously, uh, in the team as a whole, had invested a lot of money into the trip. Hotels, uh, charter bus, obviously paying to be in the event. Um, hockey, I'll get into this a little bit as well. Hockey being a little bit different than basketball, football, soccer baseball, things like that, because the hockey rink obviously is not a school facility. You have to rent ice. You don't necessarily have to rent the gymnasium. So it's a lot easier to cancel a basketball practice than it is to cancel a hockey game, right? You're going to eat a lot of money and, and a lot of expenses there. So uh, initially, Forest Hill Central was not going to come, and then they were going to come, and then they weren't going to come again. But a lot of semantics went into the trip. Ultimately, Central ended up making the trip up to Traverse City. Uh, a lot of circumstances and decisions went into that from the school level, from the program level. Uh, I won't get lost in all the details, but ultimately the decision was made to let uh, the players go and participate in the event, obviously having invested in the event itself, hotels and, and all that. Uh, parents had to drive their own kids, which I'm sure isn't really a problem to many of us in the hockey world. Um, but there was a bit of a stipulation uh, kind of based on the rules and, and structure that the school had in place uh, that school employees could not be a part of it. Uh, so that's what kept the Forest Hills coaches from participating in the event. So the team got to play, but the coaches uh, were not allowed to be on the bench. And that's kind of how it all unfolded, uh, got approached, got asked, hey, can you step in on short notice? Would you mind uh, filling in and, and stepping in and kind of helping the team out, helping the kids out? Um, and obviously, I'm not going to pass up an opportunity like that to get to uh, kind of get back on the bench. Uh, some of you may or may not know. I mean, I was I was on a high school bench as recently as 12 months ago. So jumping in and getting back in the mix uh, was great for me, but I also felt, you know, almost obligated to kind of help out a program in need and in a spot like that. So uh, really I, I was humbled that coach Bill McSween would even uh, would even ask me to, and, and, you know, kind of put a lot of faith in me and confidence in me to uh, be able to step in on short notice and, and help the team out. So uh, that was pretty wild, pretty crazy. Um, and happy to do that. And, and like I said, almost, felt obligated because I was on site, because I was available in that way. Having just been in the game not that long ago was a pretty easy transition. Um, whereas, you know, there were conversations about trying to get an, a, uh, another coach to come up from Grand Rapids or, you know, do you pull parents in or stuff like that and just kind of overcomplicating things. So I was already there, pretty easy transition. Glad it all worked out. Um, got to be a pretty unique experience, not just for me, I think for the kids as well. Um, so very cool to be a part of it. 
Uh, I think I can say we now, <laughs> talking about Forest Hill Central. Uh, very unique dynamic. Never really expect to be the story when I'm constantly writing the stories. So uh, it was a unique opportunity. Got to work with the kids, you know, really hands-on, line matching, uh, putting out uh, defensive pairings. Really got to work with uh, the six defensemen there on the back end. Really good group. I got to be honest with you, made my job uh, very easy. <laughs> it uh, you know, was a really well-coached group that uh, I, to a degree, just needed to stay out of the way and let them do their thing. It was, it was pretty cool to watch as, uh, you know, we were shorthanded and they had, they were very specific on how they do their penalty kill and the communication on the bench. Hey, I got him. You got this guy. Um, some of that stuff was very impressive to see line changes were super smooth, uh, and things like that. And that's what I meant. I got to kind of just step back and be a fly on the wall, a fly on the bench to a degree. Um, but it was nice to, uh, work closely with guys like Gibson Grundell, Eli Ripke, as, as Lipke, sorry, Eli Lipke, as they're coming off the ice. Hey, you know, this is what you did. You had some options here or being harder on pucks. I'm just kind of emphasizing some of the details of the game. Uh, I'm hoping for them. It was kind of another fresh voice, maybe someone kind of um, reiterating some of the, the details of the game and things like that. Just kind of a, you know, you hear it from coach all season long and ah, it gets to be a tiring message, but when it's a fresh voice, maybe, uh, maybe it can kind of help register and click a little bit, but got the win on Friday against Traverse City West. Took a very tough loss to Livonia Stevenson on Saturday, uh, but you know, still proud of the group. Like I said, I, and I told them too. Uh, was just very impressed. I, I feel like that group in general took a big step in terms of maturity and growth and kind of handling that adversity head on. Um, on so many levels, right? They're coming. They're not coming. They're coming now, but it's going to be different. And you don't have coaches. You do have coaches. So uh, a lot of moving parts there for them on the weekend. And uh, and the fact that uh, they got one win and, and probably should have had two. It was a tough, tough one, like I said. Uh, but in the fight there against a very tough, very talented Stevenson team who, uh, you know, as I was doing my research last week on the showcase in general, Stevenson hasn't lost in that showcase in over 10 years. They're 20 and 0 in their last 20 games in Traverse City. So it was a tall task, a tough ask to go up against a team like that. Uh, and, and so, you know, hard to hard to hang your hat on any moral victories. Um, but being 3-3 with a tough team like that down the stretch and, and then giving up a tough one there in the final minute of the game and having a chance to tie it back up uh, in the waning moments. Um, you know, you got to feel somewhat, you know, good about that. So it'll be interesting moving forward as the rest of the season unfolds. You know, I was, I was telling coach McSween, you know, if you guys go on to, to win a wooden mitten or something, I, I'm expecting some jewelry to go along with it too. So uh, a little more invested in the Rangers there, maybe a little more so than I already was, but uh, so it should be a fun season down the stretch here for them. Uh, again, thank you to them, the players, the coaches, the parents, uh, for allowing me to kind of be involved in any capacity uh, in their season was pretty special. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So, uh, okay. Let me uh, spotlight a couple of players actually uh, for them. I'm blanking on his first name. Sorry. Sutherland had a big weekend for them. I know. Uh, don't think he had scored a varsity goal up until the weekend and then ended up scoring three in the span of those two games. Uh, so big shout out to him. I know he had a big weekend. I mentioned Eli Lipke. He was one who really impressed me uh, on the back end there. Just real simple, uh, getting pucks out, hard on pucks, good regroups, things like that. Um, maybe nothing overly flashy about his game, right? Grendel has a little bit more of the the uh, the fancy footwork and the flashy hands and things like that. But Lipke is absolutely one of those guys you kind of need on the back end uh, who's going to uh, – I use the expression singles and doubles over home runs. Quit trying to look for the 80-foot pass and be comfortable taking that 8- to 10-foot outlet pass. Uh, Lipke is very much that singles and doubles guy, uh, but so effective on the back end. And, and sometimes I think defensemen there don't do enough of that, right? Trying to make the sexy play and hit the home run. So um, really was was pleased with that. Uh, Nemers and net for us was, was fantastic. You know, he's a big, big guy. Really impressed me there. I'd, I'd seen him before, but you know, kind of getting a more up close and personal look at him. He, he was, 
he was uh, really good for for the Rangers and and uh, you know the, especially the game against Stevenson. Uh, really good movements laterally it was kind of what what impressed me. There was a couple of saves there. Uh, Stevenson, some bang bang tic tac toe type plays um, that really uh, really could have exposed us and and made that score much different than it already was. So um, so yeah, I thought Nemers looked strong in that as well. Um, all right, so that was a lot on Forest Hill Central, the very unique set of circumstances. Uh, it's always interesting, you know just getting a laugh out of uh what's the word not the faculty the just how high school programs handle uh the hockey teams in particular hockey people we are just built different we are wired different there isn't a snowflake in the lower 48 that's going to keep us from getting to the ice rink you know we've we've maxed out our vacation days we've maxed out our sick days we're taking a no pay day to take our kid to the rink Friday you know, this weekend for the showcase, right? We are pot committed. We are all in on this. There's no, nothing is going to keep us from getting to the rink and watching little Johnny not back check uh, in a, in a blowout game, right? How many times have we gone to those five game weekends uh, in the hotels, mini sticks in the hallway, you know, the, the tough games where you don't know what kind of draw you're going to get playing teams that are way over your skis and, and you're getting your lunch handled to you, but you drive, you drove 800 miles one way to get there. You're pretty invested. You're not going anywhere. Right. So it's a little bit different than uh, any other animals in sports, right? This is, this is not your soccer moms sitting in the van waiting for the storm to pass. So we can trot little Johnny out there to play soccer this isn't uh, Joe baseball, right? We're we're not canceling tournaments because there's some rain. Hockey people come through, man. We are just we're built different. We're wired different. We are way more invested than your average sports parent. So big shout out there to uh, not just the Forest Hill Central hockey parent group, but all of the parent groups out there. Uh, if you know, you know. So uh, all right, let me get to. Uh, Look, there was a ton of teams in action, a ton of players. I'm going to get to as many of them as I can here. Um, but there's just a lot to get to in general. So let me let me slow down for a minute, and I'll kind of reset here. Um, okay, so honestly, biggest, biggest takeaway out of the entire weekend for me uh, was probably Marquette. Um, Marquette, you know, I mentioned – in the blog on pdspicks.com. I think I put it up yesterday, maybe Monday. Anyways, had a lot of thoughts on players and, and some general thoughts on teams. But, you know, the biggest takeaway for me was Marquette. I had them going into the weekend ranked, I think, 15th in my top 25 for the month of January. The way they looked this weekend, the way they played against Bay Raps, for instance, uh, that's a team who could potentially be in the top five the next time I get to updating. Uh, my top 10, top 25 rankings. Marquette looked really good. Um, you know, it was the, I think the second or third time I'd seen them this season and seeing them up close live was pretty special. Uh, you know, I mentioned the way this team looks and what coach Doug Garrow has done. This is a coach's dream to watch, to watch this going four lines deep, 6D on the back end. And they really just open the door and let them roll. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's more to it than just that, but you know, my thousand foot view uh, from afar was just wave after wave after wave. Um, they just kept coming at the Bay reps and really kind of overwhelmed them, kept them hemmed in their own end for long stretches. Um, you know, I was talking with one coach as the game was unfolding in front of us and we were talking casually, whatever. And, and then after, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, he goes, man, the puck's been in this end a lot. And uh, so it was just one of those things where we weren't really dialed into the game in that moment, uh, but just kind of your peripheral and you're like, wow, you know, I haven't really thought about it, but the play has not left this end uh, for the entire time we were talking there. So um, so it was just a uh, – there's not a lot of – not to mention this multiple times as far as Marquette goes – there's not a lot of flash in their game. I don't know how many high, high, um, high end, you know, 
30, you know, 30 point scorers there are on this roster or anything like that, but it's just so damn relentless and so effective. And it's just the overall, because there's so much buy-in top to bottom, left to right. Like that's what makes this team so strong. They don't necessarily need that premier goal scorer or the shutdown goalie in net. Now, um, you know, Cole Kelly and that is, is certainly solid. I'm just saying like a lot of other teams are winning because of solid goaltending or because of the elite goal scorer up front or the stud defenseman on the back end. This is really just the strength of the strength of the team is, is uh, the team in its entirety. Um, so, and that's what I mentioned, just the way this team plays, it's, it's hats off to coach Garrell for sure. It's um very en- envious, enviable as, for, as a coach watching it is like, wow, how do you get an entire team to play this way? Right. I've had lines that play that way, defensive groups who played the way you wanted them to, but to have the entire team, you know, just seem to be clicking on all cylinders um, and, and everybody knows what the task is at hand and, and really everybody pulling, um, pulling in the same direction is really, really cool to see as a coach. Um, you know, at at one point, because it was just, there was too much good. I was like, all right, how do I document or kind of track what I'm seeing? And at one point I just wrote four check and I just started writing down numbers of kids who were executing the four check the way you'd want them to right? feet aren't, aren't, uh, feet are going the whole time. They're finishing their checks. They're causing scrums along the walls, forcing turnovers. And I just, Tegan Nevenhoven, um, Connor Stade, Luke Belkowski, Nash Rippey, obviously. I'll have a little bit more on him in a minute. Caleb Bierman, Hunter Sandstrom. Like it just, I just kept writing down numbers, it seemed. I was like, four check, good, four check, good, four check, good. Um, so it was just really impressive to, you know, these are guys who, you know, some of them might only have three or four points on the season, but completely impacting the game in, in other ways, blocking shots, heavy on a four check, getting into guys along the walls. Um, just very, very cool to see. You know, I've mentioned I've mentioned Seth Sandstrom a, a good amount on the podcast and on the website as well. Uh, you know, every time I see him, I feel pretty validated in saying he's the best freshman in the state. I'm going to continue to stand by that too. Uh, I just think his skill set really sets him up for a ton of success, not just now, but definitely in the future and down the road. So um, I liked him a lot. There's a ton of young uh, freshmen, sophomores that really jumped out to me over the weekend. And I'm going to get into, get into a bunch of them here as I go. But, um, but, you know, he was another one I circled there for, uh, for Marquette. I did like, so I, as much as I had, you know, I'd seen Marquette a couple times prior to had yet to see Nash Rippey in action. And I thought he really shined this weekend. You know, there was one play in particular and I'm highlighting it because it was just kind of a microcosm of his, his play over the weekend, you know, they were shorthanded, um, dumped a puck down. And so I believe it was Howell was getting ready to, to break it out and come back and Reapy aggressive forecheck gets into the defender behind the, behind the net below the goal line, forces a scrum, gets the takeaway, gets it to the scoring areas, gets it to the paint in front of the net, gets hauled down as he's going and, and gets a shot off and, and ends up scoring a shorthanded goal and it was just a microcosm of his performance over the weekend. Just hardworking, relentless, isn't going to take no for an answer. Nobody's going to stop him. And then he ends up getting rewarded uh, with a really hardworking goal there. So uh, I mentioned Cole Kelly too. I like He was really good in net, um, just really looked the part. You know, I heard, heard a lot of rumors about him preseason, potentially being one of the best goalies in the UP. I think he absolutely is one of the best. Um, Probably tough at this point for anybody in the state to match up to what Bryant Lee is doing uh, for Houghton. You know, I mentioned either last week or two weeks ago on the podcast about Lee being the number one goaltender for me uh, in the state, just based on what he's done and and how talented he is, that kind of combination there. But as far as juniors go, I mean, Kelly is absolutely right there in the mix. So uh, a couple other standouts from the weekend. Uh, Alpina, really young team. Um, and, and their talent still seems a bit raw, you know, maybe not the smoothest skaters, maybe a little rigid at times, but the pieces are, are for sure there. Uh, and it's kind of a bummer because, you know, I know they lost, um, 
two pretty high end kids to triple a over the, over the summer. And it just makes you wonder like, man, what would that team look like? Um, but ultimately a lot of good, uh, a lot of good prospects here on the team as is, uh, Parker Schultz in, in net. he's, he's a freshman, very technical in the right position, maybe just a little stiff sometimes in his movements, I thought, but, um, He's certainly going to get more comfortable and develop and, and have a more natural flow from, you know, from spot to spot, for instance, as he continues to grow and learn. But, you know, I really liked his potential a lot and just thought th there's some good pieces there, a good foundation as he kind of moves forward through the next three and a half years, uh, gosh, of his high school career there. Uh, Garrett Hamp is an absolute finisher. That guy just knows how to put the puck in the net. Got a real nice backhand short side top shelf finish that was very impressive uh, I'm not sure there were many people in the building over the weekend that could have made that play um, still some work to do in terms of skating and just overall strength but again that comes that comes with time not all the not every freshman sophomore is is going to be built and filled out and you know fully developed strength right it's going to come with time so uh, Gavin Winterstein, I thought he had more of that size and a bit more filled out that I was talking about. Did a nice job positioning wise. I thought he did a good job of staying on top of the play, uh, especially, you know, being a center, you, you like to see good solid positioning there. Uh, and really there was one point, you know, he went in, not on a breakaway. It was like a two on one. He was on his off wing and kind of got off a, a sneaky quick shot in stride, never really broke stride. You know, you're seeing a lot more of that now with players shooting off the rush um, without breaking stride, kind of sneaks up on the goalie. He did that and ended up scoring a goal off of it. Uh, I've talked about Luke Miller a bunch this season, too. He looks like a varsity player, really passes that eye test. Uh, sometimes, like I mentioned, you see these freshman sophomores and you can tell right away, right? Maybe a little lighter, maybe a little thinner, uh, not quite as strong, maybe a little weak on the puck at times, but Miller has that look to him. He, he looks um, and may be their best kind of all around player currently, just his ability to skate, uh, strength on his skates, moving pucks, that type of thing. Um, may kind of be their best, well, most well-rounded player at present day. Uh, freshman Ethan Walker was a nice surprise to me too. Uh, at one point was kind of running quarterback on the power play, um, navigating pucks back and forth between Miller on one end and Hamp on the other. That's a big spot for him, especially as a freshman. I didn't really expect that. So uh, definitely one I kind of circled coming out of the weekend uh, that maybe wasn't on my radar necessarily uh, coming in. So they actually, Alpina actually played Granville and Granville kind of leads into my next team. Um, and that was a busy game for me. A lot of underclassmen, a lot of freshmen, sophomores uh, that play pretty impactful roles on both teams. So I was I was busy jotting down a lot of notes in that one. Um, Granville, like I mentioned, young team, handful of kids, I think, with, with some bright futures. Uh, Landon Smith is a sophomore uh, and leads the team in scoring already. You know, he's, um, he's another one that kind of passes that initial eye test. He looks the part, almost looks like a football player on skates. Uh, and I mean that more just from his size, right? Um had really good effort, but uh, maybe a little bit more intensity, maybe a little more grit behind his play. But ultimately, like I said, the, the skating ability, the puck skills, uh, and kind of that effort there. Effort sometimes can be the hardest uh, skill to get out of some players because it's one of those things you kind of either have or you don't. And so that's why I, I really like Smith because he has that component. And if you have that, I can work with the rest. I can develop your hands. I can develop your feet. Uh, I can develop some of your playmaking abilities. As long as that effort is there, that's a pretty big component. So uh, I really liked Braden Vanderveen on the back end as well. He was another one that kind of snuck up on me. Great skater, good hips and feet as he kind of walked the blue line there at times. Uh, I thought he was pretty quick in his movements and quick to move pucks into the funnel as well. That's kind of a, an expression we like to use amongst the defensemen. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, on net. It's just got to be past shin guards, through skates, get it in the funnel, get it in that area somewhere so our guys can get a stick on it or maybe deflect it and get it on net. I thought he did a good job of getting pucks in the funnel there. Uh, Zach Stonehouse, one more. Uh, surprisingly heavy shot, maybe not the prettiest skater, but very effective. 
um, uses what size he has to kind of wall off defenders and, and protect pucks. And uh, so he was another one I liked. And then, um, you know, there was, there was more young players uh, making things happen for both Granville and Alpina. It was, it was a very busy game. Uh, Aiden Karras in net, you know, he was another one, maybe again, young growing. So he's a little bit smaller, but good pieces there, right? Good foot, good footwork, good movement. Uh, a lot of potential there. Really just a just a testament, I think, to what Coach Brazil uh, is doing over there for Granville. Young young team facing maybe a bit of a adversity and growing pains this season. Um, but I like the way they play. There's They're moving in the right direction. There's good things happening there. Kind of throw out the records and the scores uh, with some of these teams. I, I'm going to trust – I'm going to trust what I see ultimately. And I think what I'm seeing with teams like Granville uh, and Alpina, is there's a lot of good pieces and a lot of promise there. So the results might not necessarily be there today, um, but they're coming, but they're coming. So that was, again, from a coaching perspective, really, really cool to see. Uh, East Grand Rapids, that game with St. Edwards was, was pretty fun. Good back and forth. Uh, God, I, I like, Glenn Green a lot. The more I see him, the more I like him. Uh, kind of a phone booth player is kind of what I labeled him as. Is you could put him in a in a phone booth with a defender, and he's still going to find a way to dipsy do and and get around you. So pretty impressive. Ian McKagan obviously showed a ton of puck skills as well. Every time I watch East Grand Rapids, it seems like a different forward jumps out to me, and I'm just like, wow, that kid's got skill. Kid can make plays. Kid's got good effort. Things like that. Uh, James Albers was one that really jumped out to me over the weekend. Nice burst, good explosiveness with with some of those one-on-one type plays. I think I even wrote it uh, in the blog on pdspicks.com. Uh, you know, he made a nice like forehand backhand move to get around a defender and didn't just do it, but did it at a fast pace, uh, which is kind of more the impressive part is to to see you be able to demonstrate those skills and do it at top speed and navigate your way around defenders. Um, it was really impressive. So, uh, okay. Gavin Moore and Jake Crockford were a pretty nice duo there to watch for Kingsford. I was thoroughly impressed by those two. Uh, Kingsford was another one of those teams. I didn't really know what to expect before I watched them. And, and I thought every time I watched them, they were the two best players on the ice. Uh, and that's saying a lot against a team like Chippewa Valley. Uh, you know, that ended up being a four, three game, but I just, you know, more, Moore is a shooter. <laughs> Anytime the puck is on his stick, I think he's a threat to, to throw it on net. Reminded me a lot of like Bryson Smith right now for Port Huron Northern. Uh, never seen, he's never seen a bad look at the net. Like I said, if it's on his stick uh, and he has any sliver of hope at, at putting it on net, he's he's throwing it on net. So um, puck just seemed to be on his stick a bunch and, and he makes the most of his opportunities too. So uh, Crockford on the other hand was, just a really good energy guy. I thought he was really busy uh, on the forecheck and making scrums happen and things like that. So, um, so yeah, it was, was uh, good to see that from Kingsford. Uh, Alan Park has a ton more skill than I was expecting. Uh, there's some real good, nice hockey players there for, for the Jags. Uh, they won me over a good amount, even though they lost both their games. Like that's what I was saying earlier. I, Overall team records, uh, the the results on the scoreboard, I'm going to trust what I see. And I, I saw a lot of good there uh, from Allen Park, just real talented hockey players. You know, there's there's kids who play hockey and then there's hockey players. And, and I think Allen Park has a good amount of hockey players who are able, able to uh, make plays Hands and feet and rhythm is kind of the expression I've been using a lot this season where they just look very natural, very comfortable uh, with the puck on their stick and making plays. And I was pretty blown away um, at how effective a lot of the guys were there for Allen Park. Uh, Escanaba is another one. Cully Hayes, he's in the mix among top sophomore goaltenders. Uh, I think there's no question about that. It was actually great to see both him and Tyler Boynton Fisher from the Bay Reps kind of show out over the weekend Two young and budding uh, goaltending prospects in Michigan high school hockey. Both were under the same roof. That's pretty exciting to see. 
uh, for people like me. Graham Johnson flashed some real nice moments. I uh, thought he, he um, showed an ability to be explosive uh, at times, which is really what you, a, a nice component of your game that you like to see. Uh, when you can have that real good burst, that first two or three strides that get you going, um, or some of that explosiveness to get around a defender, like I was mentioning earlier with Albers, um, really good to see. Uh, but Nolan Bank kind of stole the show for me as far as the Eskimos go. You know, he um, he's listed as a forward on the website. He was a forward last year for Escanaba, was playing on the back end this weekend, was playing defense. And at first, my, my kind of knee-jerk reaction was Escanaba only had 10 skaters. You know, I wondered maybe there were some injuries and maybe they lost a couple of defensemen and, and Bink kind of filled a need there on the back end. And I was pretty impressed by how well he played from the back end. A ton of puck touches, uh, making a ton of plays. Sometimes, you know, Gibson Grendel is a great example of this, who was a forward converted to D. Uh, sometimes it works out really well for some of those talented forwards who make the move back to D because you end up getting so many more puck touches, so many more opportunities to make plays. Now it takes the right kind of balance for, for somebody to make that transition from forward to D. Um, so initially as I'm watching bank, I'm like, wow, this seems too good. Like I love him on the back end. Let's keep him on the back end. Uh, and I don't, I probably shouldn't say too much on that. I don't want to speculate, uh, on how or, or what a program is doing, uh, with players, but I did have a little back and forth with coach Andy Johnson. And he had mentioned that defense was actually Nolan's, um, kind of primary position in youth hockey and last year was a switch up to forward. So him now playing defense is more of a natural progression, a natural position for him. Uh, and it showed, it showed uh, a ton. He looked very comfortable on the back end, making a ton of plays. If, um, if anyone on Escanaba kind of had the best weekend, I think it was him um, just with his ability to impact the game in a lot of different ways. So uh, he immediately became one of, if not my favorite sophomore defenseman. Uh, I'll kind of let you guys in. I'll tease some content for later in the season. Um, I'm going to bring back my all senior team, all junior team, all sophomore, all freshman teams, uh, which I'll announce and, and publish at the end of the season. Um, but I'm kind of evaluating and plugging kids in and taking guys out as a, based off of what I see. Right. And I see Bink on the back and I'm like, <sighs> comparing and contrasting to what's there. I'm like, he is every bit as good uh, as some of these other sophomores there on the back end. So immediately kind of gets thrown into the mix there uh, for, you know, we're probably still a month and a half or two months away from making any final decisions, but uh, definitely in the mix there and, and loved what I saw. So uh, speaking of different positions too, I saw Jack Mickus, I believe, uh, was playing some forward for Grand Rapids Christian. I don't think I'm mistaken on that, but uh, he was all over the all over the ice, um, making a lot of plays, a lot of puck touches. As I mentioned, going from forward to D, you typically see an uptick in in those puck touches. D to forward, maybe not so much, but Mikas was all over the ice. Puck just seemed to be on his stick a bunch, uh, and he was making things happen. You know, I love him as a defenseman. I think he's fantastic, and especially based off of what I saw in the fall. Um, but in this spot, maybe the Eagles needed some offensive boost. I don't necessarily know what caused the transition, but uh, I thought he provided just that. He was um, an, an uptick in offense, scoring opportunities, chances, making plays happen up front. Uh, and he's just got a ton of skill too. So any way you can kind of maximize or, or get the puck on, on his stick more um, is a good thing. So uh, I like that. Ethan Ogle on the back end, he played with great pace. Uh, I thought he had a, um, he was another one. I'm using this phrase a lot, but you're around the play a lot, getting a ton of puck touches. I thought Ogle was constantly involved in the play, which, which is super important. Josh Van Sheppen, Josh Hooper, loved how those guys just got up and down the ice. I thought they played, played with, played at a top speed, uh, which is not easy for, a lot of guys to do, you know, some people are just straight line skaters have a ton of speed in the open ice in straight line. Uh, but you put the puck on their stick, they slow down. They got to take it down in gear. Um, Van Sheppen and Hooper, I thought were two guys who could play at a top speed and make plays at top speed. So, uh, what do I got here? Eisenhower, one, 
you know, they had one win prior to the weekend. Uh, I think they were one in 12 going into Traverse city, but damn, uh, they, they made some strides in my opinion as well. Uh, Matt doused, uh, Matt doused lanky, good reach, uh, decent puck skills there on the back end. He's an underclassman. I think he's a sophomore, uh, but there's some nice pieces to his game as well. Andrew Empson, a little light, a little bit lighter, but uh, pretty good skater, I thought. Feet were pretty good. Nice fluid movements. Anytime you see that on a defenseman, it's like foundation is here. I can start working and building. You know, I can develop your hockey IQ. We can start developing some of these playmaking abilities if some of that kind of natural rhythm, uh, pucks, fluid movement, things like that, if some of that foundation is already there, it's really going to elevate and ramp up um, your potential and, and kind of development curve, I'd say, as far as defensemen go. Uh, Weston Zuderic, for, he was a freshman, uh, but very much kind of in the mix with those other two sophomores there. I thought he was a decent skater. I thought you know, I was impressed by the way he handled pucks. Uh, I know that's kind of been a recurring theme. Plus, I'm talking about a ton of defensemen. I'm just a defenseman, a defensive guy by nature. I worked with the defensemen with Forest Hills Central. It's just, it's kind of my niche. So I'm going to pick up on some of these younger uh, puck moving, uh, good skating defensemen is kind of where my attention goes first. So uh, Eisenhower, I thought, had a couple of those guys, plus a couple of forwards up front I liked. I just was not expecting to see so many guys with such potential uh, from Eisenhower. You know, like I mentioned, they had won one game heading into the weekend and they've now won three in a row and four of their last five. So could just be kind of that young team learning on the fly, like a Granville and Alpena, uh, Traverse City West, like that record isn't going to, uh, isn't going to turn a lot of heads, but there's enough talent there to you should perk your ears up and, and pay attention. And I think that's very much the case with Eisenhower where um, I think there's good pieces in place, a lot of potential for this season, but a ton of potential uh, for the coming seasons as well. Um, I can go on and on. There was a ton more, as I mentioned, I posted on the website as well. Be sure to check that out. Uh, I'm going to shift gears here briefly and get to the MIHL showcase. I'll put a bow kind of on the North South showcase and do just want to say thank you again. Uh, you know, I mentioned it on Twitter, um, but can never do it justice to uh, the Bay reps, staff, volunteers, everybody who was involved in the showcase over the weekend. I've been a part of the North South showcase as a coach, uh, obviously this past weekend, but no prior years past uh, with Livonia Stevenson and had a great experience was always, a you know, kind of the highlight of our season. Um, but when you're going there for just your team, you're really only concerned about your team and your experience now as kind of a, I'll say a member of the media, getting to take it all in from a, a big picture view Really an incredibly well-run uh, operation. The facilities are fantastic. I'm sure a lot of us now have been to Center Ice Arena in Traverse City, but it really is one of the best barns in the state. Um, fantastic sight lines. I loved some of the nooks and crannies I could get into to be able to watch the game from unique angles and, and take it all in. The staff on site was fantastic. I'm going to miss a couple people here, Tom Hardy, Patrick Dunphy, uh, the whole team at the Bay Reps went above and beyond uh, to kind of roll the red carpet out, not just for me, but for the teams involved uh, in participating. And it was just a really well-run event. A lot of curveballs thrown their way as well. Uh, as I mentioned, Forest Hill Central wasn't going to come, was going to come. Traverse City Central had issues where they had to move some games around and things like that. So um, just a really fantastic, well-run event, both as a coach and, and now as a member of the media, if you haven't been a part of it. Uh, would strongly suggest looking into it, see what strings you got to pull in order to get involved. Uh, you know, I know from Stevenson's standpoint, when I was with Livonia Stevenson, it really was one of the highlights of our season year after year. Um, and a lot of our guys would always say, you know, we'd, we'd ask them, what was the highlight of the season for you? When did the team really start to come together? Uh, what was kind of that moment where it, it clicked for us? And to a man, they all would say Traverse City, Traverse City. Traverse City. So 
uh, we always snickered and laughed like, shoot, maybe we should move that Traverse City trip to December 1st or so move it up in the season so that we can start humming along sooner. But uh, but yeah, fantastic event. I wish, selfishly, I wish there was a way to get more teams into it. And I know ice availability and, and things like that definitely limit the number of teams you can kind of host for events like this. Um, but yeah, selfishly, it's like, all right, there's 24 teams. How can we get... 36. How could we get 48? Let's blow it. Let's get as many top teams as we can get, right? So, um, and the other thing too, very competitive matchups, top to bottom. It was really cool to see different levels of competitive matchups. You had really good top 10 versus top 10 matchups, top 25 versus top 25, top top 80 versus top 80. Uh, just really good competitive hockey at various levels of Michigan high school hockey was really cool to see. So, uh, okay. Schedule got released late last week for the uh, MIHL showcase. I did actually want to give a big shout out to state champs. I just thought their presentation of, you know, the, the schedule announcement, the reveal uh, was fantastic. was pretty impressive, you know, almost like a selection Sunday type feel to it in college basketball. And that's the type of content I love. Um, Ultimately, that's the type of content I'm looking to do here with PD's picks. So the more of this kind of getting out, the better, I think, for high school hockey and to create a buzz and get people excited about what we're doing here um, is really what it's all about. And, you know, I saw, you know, Houghton watching the – watching the reveal live in their locker room. Like that's some of the buzz – that I'm talking about, which you just love to see uh, in the sport. So uh, a couple matchups that I circled right out of the gate, and this is one, you know, I'll have continued coverage of the MIHL showcase and everything as it gets closer, Uh, you know, players to watch, game predictions, uh, and and so much more. But uh, a couple games that jumped out to me right out of the gate, both CC games, obviously, CC and Houghton, CC and Byron Center. I think it's pretty clear cut those are the top three teams in the state and the order of them. Maybe there's some debate as far as the order, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's CC Houghton Byron center, but I think the way the the schedule lines up at the MIHL showcase, we're going to have an opportunity to, to let the team settle it on the ice. So that's definitely going to be exciting. Uh, And I think those will be two great matchups. A couple other ones. I like Sault Ste. Marie and Flint Powers. That one jumped out to me. I think it's, I think Sault Ste. Marie is coming a long way. They've, they've won and tied a couple of games. Uh, maybe you wouldn't expect them to and scrappy one, nothing games, one, one ties, things like that. So Flint Powers, it's a spot for Sault Ste. Marie to, to maybe steal and, and win a pretty big game there. So, uh, so that's an exciting one. U of D and East Grand Rapids, there's a ton of talent that will be on the ice there. I've been talking about both programs ad nauseum this season and just how much talent they have on both their rosters. Uh, So I think that'll be a a highly competitive game worth circling. And for scouts, there's a lot of top-level talent there to to keep your eye out on. Uh, Brother Rice and Clarkston was another one. Maybe more from that Clarkston side of things. You know, that – schedule I think for the Wolves has definitely taken a step this season they've played some tough games they've played Brighton twice uh, and things like that so that they beat Flint Powers so Clarkston Clarkston's schedule has gotten tougher and tougher uh, and to get an opponent like Brother Rice in this spot I think is a huge opportunity for them Alpina I talked about them a bunch on the episode today Alpina and Port here on Northern I think is an intriguing matchup Northern uh, playing in the MIHL, they're going to play a different style of hockey that Alpino probably doesn't see very often. Alpino being that young team, this is an opportunity to uh, maybe learn, grow, and experience a, a pretty high-level opponent uh, that they might not see on a, on a regular basis anyway. So again, face value, I think that's an intriguing matchup. My Forest Hills Central Rangers going up against Lakeland. I think that'll be an interesting one. Uh, Maybe more so for Lakeland, to be honest with you. You know, I talked about Paul Baker on last week's episode. He's going to be under some duress, going to see a good amount of firepower from Flint, or from Flint, from Forest Hills Central. Uh, So that'll be an intriguing matchup. 
Uh, and then the Bay Reps and Heartland, I think that's another intriguing matchup. The Bay Reps kind of, you know, Marquette took it to them over the weekend and showed them like, hey, you want to be a top team. This is what it takes. And I think the Reps have um, the reps have seen that, right, playing Byron Center and, and some of these top top level teams. You're going to get another opportunity there against a, one of the best teams in the state in Heartland uh, with – potential to prove yourself, right? So there's an opportunity there for the Bay reps and a good matchup for Heartland going into the game as well. Uh, you know, the the top lines there for Heartland and Bay reps are going to go toe to toe and it should be fun to watch. So uh, last one I circled here was Stevenson and Hancock, kind of a, just an intriguing stylistic matchup. Um, you know, getting to see Stevenson firsthand, you know, up close and personal over the weekend. Uh, Owen Hall is, is dangerous up front, but then for Hancock, you got uh, Todd Capella, who's dangerous on the back end. So uh, there's some sneaky good matchups and uh, two good coaches as well that'll kind of go toe to toe with who's got last change and, and playing some of those mind games. So uh, so that'll be a fun one as well. There's a ton of matchups I could get into too, but again, as I kind of perused through the schedule real quick, these were the knee jerk ones that jumped out to me uh, the most. So. All right, so that was a ton there for this week's episode. Uh, I am still lacking on. I got to update my top ten rankings. I'll get that later this week. Uh, I also got picks uh, for this weekend. I'll make some picks and selections of games upcoming and big matchups. So be on the lookout for that on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and we'll get that out to you as well. Be sure to join in the conversation and make your picks against mine as well. Uh, what else? Maybe some big wins. I can throw some big wins, big wins over the weekend. I got to get to that too. So I'm backed up a little bit just because there was so much from the North South showcase I wanted to get to, uh, blog on the website episode here, tons of content out. Be sure to check, check it out. Um, obviously if you're watching here on YouTube, be sure to like, and subscribe. That goes a long way for me personally and, and greatly appreciate the support. Uh, if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, uh, be sure to follow, rate, review, subscribe, uh, however it may be. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll continue plugging away here with, um, with, uh, with picks, with rankings, players to watch. We're getting down to it here. Well past the halfway point of the season. Uh, we'll have some, the MIHL showcase I mentioned, we'll start scratching the surface on playoffs and regionals. Maybe we'll get into some of that next week because we'll be about a month out from playoff hockey, which is wild to say. So, all right, we'll put a bow on that for this week. Until next time, skate hard, have fun. See you guys at the rink soon.